this computer. What was that, Greg? I was going to ask Mr. Herbert, what's, uh, what's your prediction? I'm very blue. What's your prediction for this lockdown? When do you reckon it will end? I reckon two, three weeks. Yeah, I reckon two, for three Melbourne. Weeks. Yeah, I, think, I think Sydney is going to be next year. God, Daniel, oh, yeah. Daniel. Well, maybe if you guys try an actual lockdown, it might speed things up. <laughs> I'm with you there, Lee. You know, I'm actually really shocked at the, the level of ways you can get around a lockdown. Oh, you, you know, know it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's the, the thing that I mean, at my age, everything pisses me off. But the thing that really gets me <laughs> when I was like, young <laughs> is I watch, I watch, I've, I've actually stopped watching the press conferences because it just, you know, it makes yeah. daddy angry. And uh, particularly as a comms person, the mixed messaging and the inability, mm. like, let me tell you, one of the most important things in a crisis is a single point of communication and it's got to be clear and understandable. And like, it's like they just talk without thinking, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, and, and the, the language they use, oh, just. Well, they get in front of a media scrum and they get flustered. Which I understand, but it's like, they, they, then again, it's one of those things where, and I understand the, the politics is challenging. Like the leader needs to be out there, but if the leader's not good at, speaking in public which i mean unfortunately politicians have to get good at hire a pr person and get the pr person to do it i mean the pr person would be even more frustrating but it would just be nice and some are better than others and i'm not going to name names because everyone will have their own opinion but it's nice when some actually ignore it's difficult because the press is very often trying to the, the press very often comes across like that, that bitchy girl in high school. Oh, you know what she said about you? And you know what she said about you? And they're just trying to get someone yeah. to say something. And get the angle. And, yeah. and get people. Yeah. Oh, I heard this. I, I heard this politician said this about you. What do you want to say about them? And it's like, that's not helpful. Mm -hmm. But it'd be nice if some politician just came out and went, okay. Like, I understand sometimes they, they don't want to acknowledge the question. So yeah. they just keep keep on their talking points. And it's so obvious that they're doing it. It'd be nice if they were just human. I just went, okay, look, I'm not, I'm actually not going to acknowledge the, the, the premise of your question because I think it's wrong. And here's why I think it's wrong. And just speak like a normal person. Yeah. 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 I think when they're out of um, politics, they're, they're like that. But, you know, there's so much media training that they do that it's, yeah. Anyway, going back to these rules, seriously. Yes. I can go and, you know, within a five kilometer radius, given that and catch up with someone that I don't know or do know and go jogging with them. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> and, and again, this is, you guys are going to get me, have to get me a shut up because I will go on about this. Messaging and imaging is important. Like, like take, for example, here in Victoria, we have to wear masks outside. We've got like, you walk outside your front door, you have to wear a mask. Now it's the logic of it the logic of it being pointless, I understand in certain situations. Like I go for my one hour walk every day. I call it yard time and I'm in suburbia. So I see maybe 10 people in an hour that I'm walking. And whenever I see someone walking towards me, I cross the road. So the chances of the two of us needing to wear masks on our one hour walk are pretty bloody minimal. Like I'm not going to infect someone and I'm not going to get infected because I'm not getting even close to anyone in that one hour walk, but the symbolism yeah. of everyone wearing the mask is important because number one, it reminds everyone that shit is real and we, we need to be conscious of this all the time. And number two, it's a symbol of going, Hey, I care about you. So I'm wearing this thing. You care about me. So you're wearing that thing. Let's all care about each other. It sucks. Like I, like you cannot believe and i hate lockdowns and i hate masks but if we all just do it we will get out of this quicker yeah is photography an exercise no no no, no. A like this like again like no. this is so many people try and find excuses mm. to get around the rules whereas what we should be doing is just the opposite everyone yep. should just kind of go as soon as we all just try and, I mean, look, it, it, it's easy for me to say because I don't like people in general. So staying away from people <laughs> is pretty bloody easy. Um, but it's just like if everyone just like, like when, 
it, it's not as extreme now, but when, when COVID first came out, my attitude was like, I'm going to pretend like I've got it and I don't want to give it to anyone else. And I'm going to pretend like everyone else has got it and I don't want to get it from them. And if we yeah. all, if everyone on the planet had that attitude for one month, we'd be out of this bloody mess already. Mm, that's true. That's true. That's true. Which, which is not fair because people, you know, I'm very lucky that I can work from home. Most people can't, but I can yeah. edit from mm. home. I can't, I, I'm running out of things to edit because I can't go out and film. Um, we've got plenty. We've got plenty, Ali. If you want some stuff, you want some more work? No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting through all the all the episodes of every Star Trek. It's great. Wow. But, but it's it's um, it's just so frustrating because. Yeah. But I think going back to Lee's point, photography is not an exercise. It's, um, you know, it's a hobby. Mm. If you're and if you're out doing it for work, well, then you should have a permit. That's true. That's true. You know, otherwise we're um, just going, you know, on the movie set. Why not? Yeah. You know, I mean, if you're, I mean, sure. If you're jogging and you've got a GoPro on your chest, well, good luck to you, you idiot. Mm. Um, <laughs> but you know, if you're walking around with the DSLR and a big whopping zoom, well, you're not out exercising. Yeah. Yeah. Although I will say like, if you want to take your camera on your walk and stop and take a couple of snaps, you know, again, you, you would be on the walk anyway. Um, yeah, I know, but it's, I think it comes back to that thing of optics that you, yeah, true about the mask. You know, oh, if it's okay for that person to carry a camera and stop and take shots of whatever. Yeah, no, fair enough. Then mm. I can do this or I can, yeah. I think just, I, just take your phone. Area, I, yeah. I know a lot of photographers in, our, in the groups that I'm in have asked that question. And I've always stayed quiet because I didn't want to be too opinionated on it. But um, you know, this is our, this is our, our YouTube channel. We can say whatever the hell we want. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I just think, you know, the optics of it aren't good. And I think it comes back to exactly what you said, Lee. It's that just do what you're supposed to do and we'll get out of this sooner. Mm. I think yeah. if you take your phone, it's, it's a little bit different. Guys, did you see the, the lights, camera one? Or the, the lights uh-huh. phone one, I should say. It's like his new phone, but they're only selling in Japan. Japan. And um, let me just bring it up here. So it's basic, it Japan. they are. Yeah. So a lot of uh, people in the U S and here in Australia are like a fanboys, and they, they're basically, and girls, and they are basically wanting the phone. And then they announced that it's only in Japan and it sort of killed Why the mood. Why would they restrict of, their market like that? Is it because they can't make enough of yet? And Japan's would, the best market. I would say that, but. I think if you're going to break ground in the photography realm with your first product, it's got to be in Japan. I mean, yeah. you, you do it in the US and you're going to get the tech reviewers and stuff like that. You're not going to get the true street photographers. It's true. You know, which, mm. Yeah, they do love their likers. Mm. I remember going into um, one of the secondhand camera stores in Japan and it was just shelves and shelves and shelves of likers, film and digital. Mm. Yeah. Well, this has got an f1.9 lens and up to a six-fold digital zoom. Uh, And it delivers brilliant pictures in RAW and JPEG and true-to-life detail, especially in large format prints, with an equivalent of a 19mm focal length. In full frame allows an extraordinary wide field of view. So there you go. Mm. Now, more importantly, does it hold up against the iPhone? Does it shoot video on a one-inch sensor that's 20.2 megapixels? Mm. What, are you, what are your thoughts, Lee, before I get to the specs on video? Do you think they included it? I would hope so, but I'm going to guess they didn't. You would be 100% right because I just did a search on the page for the word video. Bam, bam. Well, wow. Well, you know what? Look, I mean, video, I'm, I'm, I'm going to way oversimplify this, but you know, if you're shooting video, you're shooting minimum 25 frames per second. So that's taking, t- that's processing 25 photos per second and the color sampling can be a bit different whenever. So Mm. if you want to focus on the photography side of the phone and you want to get it out and you may just not have the bandwidth, um, my camera's done something weird. I'll sort that out. Um, You may not have the bandwidth to focus on the video side of it. So, you know, get the photo bit right and then Mm. focus on the video later. So yeah, 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 true. You know the good news though, all the pictures are going to be really sharp. Do you know why? 
Why, Lee? Why? Because it's going to be made in collaboration with Sharp. Oh, oh, that's terrible. <laughs> Lee, you, you've uh, got it is way kid. past your bedtime. Yeah, no, 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 no he's, he's got a kid. He's allowed to make dad jokes. Yeah, true. <laughs> What's wrong with your camera? I think, I think, I think the battery's died. Let me just. Oh, oh no. Gosh, the videographer has lost video. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, the irony. Oh, no. The battery's. Oh, the battery's for those on YouTube, uh, you know, no, you, all, all we're. No, let me just for those that aren't on YouTube, uh, yeah, all you're seeing is a imaging edge webcam. So, and it looks like you can reverse your picture on the webcam. It looks pretty cool. So, mm. okay, phone technology, it's going to be really important coming, you know, as we go into the next century. Where do you think it's going to go? Our phone's going to get smaller, bigger. And what's the camera's going to be like? What do you think the cameras are going to be like? Yes. Yes, 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 yes to everything. <laughs> um, I think they'll. I think there'll always be a market for bigger cameras, just because people, we have big hands, and um, you know, it's like DSLRs haven't haven't shrunk much. If anything, they've gotten bigger since the film days, since the SLR days. Um, so I don't know that they're going to get smaller necessarily. The tech will probably improve, but I think they'll keep the size. Hmm. I think there'll be a little bit of everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking more phones here. So, yeah. Oh, sorry. I'll yeah, yeah, yeah. Camera cameras. No, no, no. I'm sorry. talking about the, the future of cameras, Greg. It's phones, isn't it, Lee? Didn't we talk about this it's, last week? How, how far into the future are we going? Because I'm talking you know, like 10 years. 10 years. Oh. So reckon, VR and AR, yeah? I reckon the technology will not have, like, the sensors wouldn't have gotten that much bigger because physics... Um, so unless someone works out some new way of capturing imagery, um, the physical aspects aren't going to change that much. But, and we're seeing this already, the AI is just going to, you know, computational photography is yeah. just going to get so much smarter. Like already, when you think about the, if you, you know, if you've got an iPhone 12 or 12 pro, the low light feature for the photography is pretty darn incredible. Yeah. And and that that must be AI because the sensor is still the sensor. You know, there's only so much yeah. the sensor can capture. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I I I think the computational photography is in the next five years is where things are just going to take a, a, a huge leap forward. Yeah. And I think that's more of a chip thing than a than a physical lens or you mm -hmm. know, or sensor. That's more of a processing thing because it's going to be like that software sharpen AI. Sharpen AI. Can't remember uh, this, it, where this super, you, yeah, yeah, you can yeah. you scale up your images and the, the AI will fill in the pixels. Um, so well, it doesn't look pixelated once you've zoomed. Well, in March this year, Photoshop released the super resolution feature, uh, you know, in, in quotations. Um, and that gives you a four times resolution uh, using AI. So it basically takes a 12 megapixel photo and turns it into a 48 megapixel photo. Yeah. Wow. Is that freaky or is that freaky? Uh, there's a software that I did a review for ShockKit for last year, and I think it's Sharpen AI. I can't remember the oh, yeah, name of the actual company that makes it. Uh, it's a Topaz. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. that was pretty remarkable. And it was a simple, simple interface, mm. um, and it was pretty accurate. And basically, they were saying you know you could take your old iPhone photos and make them so that you could print them large scale. You know. Do you know what's really funny? <laughs> In the menu, they have the word enhance. So you go down enhance. So it's like all those, um, uh, you know, CSI. CSI. Yeah, yeah. Enha <laughs> quick enhance, enhance. enhance. <laughs> oh wait, hang on. I've, I've, I've got, I've got a, I've got a fun, one. Yeah. I've got a fun yeah. one to talk about that. I, I'd be interested yeah. to hear your fine gentleman's opinion on this. Um, so this week there's a, a company that makes a product called Filmstro, and it's for creating copyright-free music for video. Um, really clever little 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 interface. So they've got like basically like loops and and music and things like that. But but they've got three sliders, which is like intensity, uh, drama, whatever. And as your video is playing and as the music is playing, you can adjust these sliders to make wow. the music like more intense, slower, more Im impactful, whatever. And so you can make your own individual soundtrack. Like as you're playing the video along, which is which is which is really cool. Um, but here's the interesting thing that they did this week: they brought out 
a just buy it version. So lifetime. Wow. Version. So you 100, 189 US, I think it was. Um, and you buy it outright. And they specifically came out and said, we're not going the subscription model because we think that people are starting to get subscription model fatigue. Mm-hmm. Um, and we want to go and give people an option to just buy it outright and not have to worry about it. And I bought it right away. Like, I don't even know if I'm going to use it, but I was <laughs> like, I actually want to, cause, cause again, it's a cool idea, but I'm not, like, you know how, like when you see these live, like the sporting, like the director in the, in the control room during a sporting event, camera one, camera two, change camera one, camera, camera three, camera four, camera five. My brain just does not work that quickly. So like I saw this cool interface. Oh, that's really cool. But like actually watching the video and then doing the sliders and thinking about it and tra- I'll give it a go, but I don't know how good I'd be at doing that. Um, but I was like 189 bucks just to support these, just to support this company and say, I really appreciate the fact that you have a non-subscription option. Um, yeah. I want to support you. So wow. what do you guys think? Yeah, I like, I, I agree with the subscription fatigue and it makes me think, you know, I've got so many different little, uh, I guess, ways of having subscriptions, you know, like I've got Netflix and Disney and Amazon Prime and um, and Apple. And then, you know, then there's there's apps that I have subscriptions to with Apple and some are for my computer and some are for my phone. For the business. And, yeah, <laughs> some are for the business. Like we've got, yeah, we've got ones that we use for the business and, and they're kind yeah. of all over the place. And, you know, it's almost it's almost like someone needs to come up with a piece of software that's just your subscription manager and it's just mm. one device, one, it's one app. It's a really cool idea. And, PayPal. You know, you, and you, it's a bit like that one password thing that we use for accessing mm. all of our systems. You know, you've got the one password and it, it kind of manages it. And, and, but having it for subscriptions and you can turn mm. them on and off. And, but, but, mm. but, you know, I reckon the subscription providers would hate that idea because if you had one app that amalgamated all your subscriptions, you'd realize how much money you're actually spending on on a monthly basis. Yeah, yeah. It's all going. yeah. But, but this yeah. this is the thing, right? It goes back to if people abusing the system. So it's, I, I'd, I'd say the other side of the argument is subscription means it's fair for everyone because there's one price to rule them all. Um, you take you go back to the days before you know the subscription days before Adobe came in. Yeah, you, it was actually cheaper to fly out of Australia, go to the US on a holiday with the airfare, buy the software in the US and fly back, then buy it in Australia. Do you remember That's that? That's crazy. Yeah, that was, but, it was hugely but expensive. But the thing is that I don't think subscription fixed that because that's more of an internet thing. Like, like, like if there's an app, well, like a perfect example. So, you know, this Filmstrip Pro um, or Filmstro, this Filmstro. Filmstro. Yep. Film, Filmstro. Um, it costs $189 US no matter where in the world you buy. Mm, mm. So that's, and I know if I paid for my Adobe subscription here, it'd be cheaper if I paid for my Adobe subscription in the US. Mm, that's so that, true. So that, so that's that true. Problem, like, like subscription didn't solve that problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You're right yeah, there. True. But yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take it back out of the subscription talk, but that, that film score that you sort of mentioned, that's AI based, correct? I'll take your word for it. I don't know. I imagine if you're moving sliders left to right, it, it's going to change the music based on, you know, the the tempo and, you know, what you want it to do. Although that's that's not so much. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say that's AI because I'm the one controlling. For okay. Me, so some, for me, if it was yeah. AI, I could just say, hey, here's my video. AI, you watch it and you make the music. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how's this for a future setup, Lee? All right. You've shot on multiple cameras. This is going to happen. Okay. Let me predict the future for you. You shot on multiple cameras, four or five cameras, and you've accidentally got the time code incorrect. Okay. You go to import and the software will automatically uh, align them. All right. Then once you've got your, your footage, you're doing uh, your voiceover, let's say, and the voiceover, you're actually, you've got one sentence in the entire voiceover and rather than reshoot it, you can just type it in because your voice is going to be recognized and AI will pick that up and you can type it in and, and the AI will automatically say it in your own voice over the video. Then when you export, you, you do it in lightning speed because we're going to be using quantum computing uh, down the track 
with uh, diamonds basically in them. Uh, so everything's going to be super fast and then you'll be able to deliver it to your client uh, wirelessly into their head. So, 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 so a few things. Number one, the first one that's there already. Um, so <laughs> yes, you, yes. You, you don't need time code to sync clips because the, the, the application will use the audio in the clips to, to synchronize them. So that's fine. Um, the, the voiceover thing with it automatically generating my voice in the voiceover, that's not publicly available. It's not easy to do. Um, it is out. But, it is out. Well, well, no. Yes. Well, so there's this, there's this new Anthony Bourdain documentary that's come out where they recreated his voice. With, like basically in the documentary, he says stuff that he didn't say because they've taken all these snippets of his voice and they've molded it together. And I don't know the process. Again, I'm being fin finicky here in terms of, because because my understanding of AI is basically, uh, it, it's like Star Trek where you talk to the computer and go, computer, do this. And it just goes off and does it. Whereas I think at the moment, there's still a fair bit of manual process where developers got to put in the inputs and tell the computer what to do. Yeah, you've got to do um, a bit of training, training on the yeah. audio. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going, to, I'm going to push back as I'm sorry. I'm being very argumentative tonight. Um, <laughs> That's okay. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to push Why? back. I'm going to be <laughs> too shy. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> I'm going to push back on the, um, the computer being super fast. And so it does it really quick. Yes. Computers will be super fast, but somehow we will always manage to make our footage bigger and heavier yep. so that the computers will pretty our experience on the computer will pretty much stay the same yep. because we'll be shooting in 56k and it'll be four cameras because it's holographic now and we've got 24 <laughs> bits of color so so like if there's one consistent for video editors you will always have to sit and watch your video render at the end but, but, but wouldn't we be uploading it to the cloud and the blockchain uh be all uh processing the data on a supercomputer Oh, as long as the blockchain hasn't melted the ice caps, maybe. <laughs> um, well, that will, that will happen. That will happen. That will happen. Again, uh, I think it's you know it's one of those things where you know you upload it to the Apple Cloud, and everyone with an Apple phone can opt in and can use their their their, <laughs> their bandwidth and their CPU. Yeah, use their CPU to actually yeah. uh, uh, process Apple. this thing, and and uh, they'll get a cut. You know, they'll get paid by Apple to do it. Okay. Okay. That last one was science fiction. <laughs> yeah. Going back to that white paper you mentioned about them releasing it, that's something you're going to pay for as well. Yeah. 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 So, oh, look, it's, 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 it's cool to, you know, it's fun. I think, I think we've had the, stop me if we've had this conversation already, but I remember um, there's this podcast that I used to listen to. It's such a shame they don't do it anymore. It's this um, DP and this producer slash DP from the UK. Um, it really nice because it's sort of like behind the scenes of how you know the, the sausage gets made with some TV shows, um, and they're always going on about how you know there's, there's no such thing as the perfect camera. Um, mm. Wouldn't it be nice to have the perfect camera? And I'll I always sort of like when I'm listening to this, I'm always going, you know what? As a cinematographer, I don't want the perfect camera because if a camera was perfect, it wouldn't need me. True, yeah. true. That's so true. But, yeah, but and that's that, perfect I, for one thing is not perfect for the other. Well, that's right. And that's, and that's like AI is something I'm quite interested in because I was actually contacted. Um, oh, this would have been a couple of years ago now. Would it have been a couple of years ago. I think it would have been a couple of years ago now. Um, I was contacted by the marketing department of a rather large um, HR company um, that, you know, they, they, they seek people. And um, <laughs> they were looking at creating some video content around AI because there was a lot of discussion about AI in the public at the time. And everyone was like, you know, AI is, AI is bad because it's going to take our jobs away. And <laughs> um, it was really interesting because I actually had to do a lot of research for this, for this pitch. Um, and I didn't get it. I was actually thinking the other day, I should look it up and see what they ended up going with and what they ended up doing. Because, you know, the, the angle that we wanted to take was to say, well, no, the thing is, AI is not going to take your job away. AI could actually be a really positive thing in that AI will take away the mundane, repetitive elements of your job and actually allow you more time to do the creative things and do the things that you want to do in your job. Now, now it will take some jobs away. Like if your job is data entry, that, that's, that's going bye-bye. Um, 
but so one of the examples that I did in my pitch, I've got to go back and look this up properly, but if I'm remembering correctly, what I did, I wanted to sort of show a day in the life of an architect in 50 years time and show how AI could replace some of the repetitive, boring parts of being an architect and allow the architect to focus on the creative and people element of their profession rather than focus on the boring stuff that you could just hand over to AI, um, which I, if I do say so myself, it was quite a cool concept, um, but I, I, it didn't get picked up. Uh, but yeah, it's like one of the things that I thought about with how AI could make my life easier without replacing me is when I get to a location, if, like if I'm working on a documentary, I'll get to a, a location where we need to film an interview and I walk into the room and I look around and I go, cool, where, where have we got natural light coming in? Where do we need to, like, first of all, what angle do we want to shoot? Like, do we want to shoot there? Do we want to shoot there? Do we want to, like, what, what's a nice background? What's, you know, the window's great, but there's natural light coming through the window and that's going to change in the next three hours. So we're not going to use that window. Or is there a way that we, like, those half sort of blackout curtains? And so I go in and I look at how to set it up. And then I think, okay, well, that's the location we're going to choose. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with my framing. Now let's set up our lighting. Cool. We're going to need a key light. We're going to need a hair light. We're going to need a fill. Uh, we might need to bring some flags to block some, some lights here, bring in some bounce, what have you, and set everything up. Whereas I envision in the future, probably a long way into the future, maybe 10, 20 years, that I'll walk into a room with a little box about the size of my iPhone that I'll just put down in the middle of the room and I'll go pick my location and show me where to put my lights. And it will look at all of those things and say, right, well, this is where you should set up your interviewee. Here's where you should put camera one. Here's where you should put camera two. Here's where you put your key. Here's where you put your fill. Here's where you put your hair. You need to do this, you need to do that. And I thought of this and I thought, oh, you know what? That's really scary. And you know, oh no, no, you know what? There's no way that a computer can learn how to do that because I've learned the, the, this creative art over the last 20 years of my career, but that's rubbish because of course a computer can learn that. What does a computer do really well? Learn stuff a lot quicker than we do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. I think you're right there, Lee. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's going to take 10 years. Uh, I'd, I'd probably say uh, five years by the time you finish yeah, doing it right. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you're doing that right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but there's already things like that, you know, like what you were just describing Lee, I can imagine that little black box in the middle of the room and you're using, an, and it creates like an augmented reality for you where mm -hmm. you're looking on your tablet or your phone and it is showing you what it's going to look like. And you could almost slide the lighting around on your screen and go, all right, cool, hold that setting, you know? And then, no, I now know that um, a lot of furniture stores are investing in this technology where you can place their furniture in your room. Mm. You know, you basically have a photo or a live live feed of your room and you can actually move their furniture around. It's kind of that kind of concept. Mm. You know, mm. this this chair here and this lamp here. And um, yeah, I think it's, I don't think it's, it's too far away to be honest, in some it, form. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I, I think portraits are going to change a lot, guys. I think um, we envision ourselves as, I mean, before social media, none of us really liked it to take our portraits. But profile photos changed that. And it changed the game for the way that people showed themselves online. Now, I think the AI is going to be so sophisticated in the future that it's going to pull data from your social feed directly and you'll be able to create a artificial photo of yourself that's realistic in every way in any angle that you want that is going to be the scary part because computers will need to instead of going okay what is fake out there they'll need to go actually what is real out there that's what the algorithms are going to have to be doing they're going to have to change the way that we we um we program them because we're going to come to a, a point where you can create an identity, whether it's yourself or anyone, in less than 10 seconds, just by a touch of a button. And mm -hmm. then that, you can use that to animate. So you could talk and it would animate the character that you've just created in real time. Mm -hmm. That is going to be scary. So I think there needs to be some type of digital passport in a way um, and to know that you're real. So this is this is uh, almost the matrix.
we were entering it into here. Yeah. Because didn't they didn't a couple of years ago someone created a video of Obama? Yes. It was oh, yeah, lifelike. There, yeah, there's, there's yeah. been quite a few deep fakes. Yeah, but these deep fakes are actually getting a lot faster now. It used to take 10 minutes to get a really good deep fake, but now you can actually do it under 40 seconds. Although one of the things to keep in mind would be something that I've seen with a couple of the deep fakes is like the person can look like the person, um, but they still have to like the movement and the voice and all that. Like there was this one that came out a, a couple of months ago, or whatever, um, of Tom Cruise. That was actually quite. That was great. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was. It was like, wow, that's swimming in the pool. Yeah, yeah. But it was. But it was like one of the top Tom Cruise impersonators in the world. So it was, like, <laughs> you know, yes, the, the technology made him look exactly like Tom Cruise, but he's actually impersonator. So he's actually really good at moving like Tom Cruise and sounding yeah. like Tom Cruise. Mm. So it's it's like, yeah. But again, you know, AI will will catch up with that, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Well, the other idea is just to, you know, get an identical twin like myself, you know, yeah, and my brother. True. Yeah. yeah. We can have a life of crime. It would be great. <laughs> well, not so much if, if he decides to have the life of crime before you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. On, <laughs> on that note, guys, um, thanks very much for tuning in, everyone and listening on uh, on podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, this has been um, an unscripted version of uh, Sound of Imagery, and we'd like to catch you on the next episode. Any, any final thoughts for the viewers and listeners, gentlemen? Stock up on toilet paper. Oh, I'm, 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 yeah. No, baked beans, you can't eat toilet paper. It's it's fair enough. That's all we've got. <laughs> all right. See ya. See ya. Bye.